Welcome back to another AEW news update as AEW stars throw shade at the Bullet Club and some interesting WWE contracts are coming to an end. But first, let's take a look at the lineup for this Wednesday's Beach Break edition of AEW Dynamite. As Funda Rosa will take on Britt Baker, we'll see a tag team battle royal for a shot at the AEW tag team titles at AEW Revolution with Top Flight, Private Party, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, FTR, Jericho and MJF, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, Sammy Guevara and Jake Hager, Santana and Ortiz, and the acclaimed battling it out to see who will take on the young bucks the young bucks are also in the match and should they win they get to choose their opponents themselves and we will also see kip sabian and penelope ford's wedding of course with the best man miro and it'll be interesting to see whether there's any shenanigans there maybe even a babyface turn for miro but we'll see where that goes and in the main event there will be a six-man tag match with john moxley pack and ray phoenix taking on kenny Omega, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. So it looks like the Beach Break special is lined up to be a good episode of Dynamite and let me know what you're most looking forward to in the comments down below. At the recent WWE Royal Rumble pay-per-view event, Big E, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods of The New Day wore a Brody Lee tribute attire. The gear is now being auctioned off on eBay to raise funds for Foodlink New York, a non-profit organization dedicated to ending hunger and building healthier communities by addressing both the symptoms and root causes of food insecurity. Jonathan Huber's wife Amanda reacted to The New Day's tribute by saying, My favorite people. Words can't express the love I have for these three incredible men I'm lucky to call my friends. Just wow. I had no idea they were doing this gear and I'm in tears. And this is another of many great tributes to Mr. Brody Lee, who passed away in December of last year. Each piece of the attire is being auctioned off separately, and you can find out more by visiting the trio's individual Twitter accounts, where the listings will be linked. After speculation of Jay White's contract status, he has returned to New Japan during the Road to New Beginnings show. White was one of many names linked with an appearance in the 2021 Royal Rumble, but of course, he never showed up. There has been rumours of his contract ending at the end of January, but this appearance in New Japan seems to confirm this as false. And before we continue, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you drop a like down below and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming AEW content. Following the speculation of his contract expiring, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer reported that Jay White had in fact told AEW that he had signed a seven-year deal with New Japan when they inquired about his services in late 2018 which would mean his contract ends in around 2025. This return somewhat confirms this to be accurate or at least that he is still under contract. White showed up after a match that featured the Bullet Club, Kazushika Okada, Toru Yano and Tomohiro Ishii with White coming out and hitting Ishii with the Blade Runner. Following months of Kenta calling out John Moxley, the IWGP United States Champion finally showed up to confront the number one contender, with the pair going face to face for the first time during the New Japan Strong event. Dave Meltzer is reporting that the confrontation was in fact taped in December and took place in the United States, which is where the New Japan Strong shows are recorded. In fact, it's in California to be precise. This means that Kenta is also in the States which could lead to him showing up on Dynamite, which is something we've been speculating on for a while. This news certainly makes it more likely than ever now that we know travel restrictions aren't an issue. The two will finally collide at the New Beginning USA show, which is scheduled for Friday, February the 26th. Talk of AEW talent rejoining the Bullet Club in Japan has been rife following the reunion of Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks and the Good Brothers. This talk seems to be fading as AEW's incarnation of the group continue to throw shade at the current New Japan stable. On this week's Being the Elite, the Good Brothers and the Young Bucks spoke about how they felt like it was 2013 again and felt like the real Bullet Club. Nick Jackson would go on to say that the 2021 version of Bullet Club sucks and stated that this is not a storyline and that they're not working with them. And ironically, this of course makes it feel like even more of a work with a potential war between Bullet Club and AEW Club in the works. 
Matt Jackson poured more fuel on this fire by tweeting, The original Bullet Club t-shirt design hadn't been in the top sellers list for two years, until the night we decided to throw up the two sweet again. You're welcome. Despite there being no official relationship between the two companies, with Moxley once again working a New Japan show and new management in place, it seems that we may be edging even closer to an official deal. Following an announcement last week that MMA Promotion 1 Championship will begin to air on TNT immediately following AEW Dynamite, former UFC lightweight champion Vitor Belfort has called out Chris Jericho in an attempt to create a crossover between the two companies. Belfort was part of Mike Tyson's entourage during the confrontation between Jericho and Iron Mike last year, and it seems he wants to be part of the action once again. Belfort is seemingly a big deal in MMA with a record of 26 wins, 14 losses in his professional career and he has the third most finishes in the UFC. And personally this is something I don't want to see and very much smells of 2013 TNA when they had a working relationship with Bellator due to them both being part of the Spike TV network. MMA and pro wrestling crossovers tend to only make wrestling look bad as you present real fighting versus fake fighting when you mix the two together. I guess we will have to wait for Jericho's response and it's likely he will smell money in this potential match and it could be likely that the TNT network want to get behind this as to boost ratings for one championship. But we'll keep you updated should there be any further developments on this story. AEW have been known to sign underused WWE talent with the likes of John Moxley, Brody Lee, FTR and many more showing up on Dynamite following underwhelming runs in Stamford. There seems to be another WWE contract ending after WrestleMania 37 and this time it's Cesaro. Cesaro recently showed up in the Men's Royal Rumble but didn't have too much of a great showing being eliminated fairly swiftly and Cesaro is no doubt one of the most misused talents in wrestling and has so much potential. There is no word on if he will be re-signing with WWE or whether he will decide to leave for greener pastures but he would certainly be a great signing for promotions like AEW, New Japan or anywhere else. So let me know what you think Cesaro should do in the comments down below and will Claudio Castagno be all elite. It's certainly going to be an interesting year with Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn's contracts also reportedly expiring in 2021. According to Fightful, Sami Zayn's contract is up in the fall after he signed a three-year deal in June 2018 and was extended due to injury and Daniel Bryan, also known as Bryan Danielson's contract is up in September of 2021. Daniel Bryan was in fact the favourite going into the Royal Rumble match so maybe plans changed due to his contract situation but that's mere speculation. So it's going to be a while before we know whether we're going to see the return of El Generico or Brian Danielson but we should have an update of the Cesaro situation in the next few months. 